How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel where you can't spell combat without a K. Unfunny misspellings aside, Mortal Kombat has been getting a lot of talk lately mainly because it's had a very low amount of competitive players willing to play in the EVO tournament for Mortal Kombat. Like shockingly low, it's apparently the second worst on the leaderboard. So how has Mortal Kombat managed to sell the bag this hard? And better question, how have other games in the genre been able to take the top spot? You might have noticed other large names at the top on this leaderboard like Street Fighter and Tekken 8. What are they doing that Mortal Kombat 1 has completely failed to do? Now, I don't expect you guys to remember, but when it comes to fighting games, I've showed time and time again that I'm not, I'm not the best at it. And to be frankly honest, my opinion on Mortal Kombat isn't all that negative. I actually think the game is pretty okay. So instead, I went and researched what the public opinion and public discretion is against the game, took some of the most talked about complaints and piled them onto a list that we're going to go over in this video. And surprisingly, at the top of that list is the aggressiveness of the microtransactions. A good example of this was the release of the holiday fatalities, three different fatalities themed around the three most celebrated holidays in the United States, Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. I originally thought the way to unlock them was from grinding the invasions mode, mostly because I had never played it and had no idea why it was there in the first place. However, the real way to unlock them was by paying $10 originally Originally per each fatality, though from my understanding they are now just a collective fatality pack. Now on paper, this seems like a moment of unnecessary hate, but after some deeper looking into this reason, I understand that the main gripe is the fact that some paid $100 for the premium edition of the game and have the DLC combat pack but not the ability to get these fatalities without paying. Which to be fair, $10 does seem outrageously high for just a fatality alone. Obviously, players find it frustrating to have to pay 70 plus dollars for the game and still have to pay 10 or 15 dollars for the in-game cosmetics. I think many can agree that having a way to earn some of the currency, even if it is in small amounts, is a pretty good change to the game. Maybe through their very unpopular invasions mode, which leads me to the next point, the game modes are underwhelming. Now don't get me wrong. The entire point of fighting games is to have the online, you know, one versus one fighting gameplay game mode. But I found out that older Mortal Kombat games had single player modes that involved towers, racing, etc. All that good stuff and now all we have is invasions. People do not seem to like the invasions mode. They say it's just a worse version of towers. What makes players upset about this is the downgrade from previous Mortal Kombat single player game modes. Like I said, fighting games are known more for their online gameplay, but many players were playing the single player modes and now they're just gone. And that isn't even where it ends. People are also not the biggest fan of the new cameo system. This, once again, seems like a complaint that is unnecessary, but I think I can agree that having more characters in the roster would be better for the game. Speaking of the characters, it's time we get on to my favorite complaint on this list, and by far the one that I agree with the most, the character balancing. Whether you love or hate the game, you have to admit the character balancing is atrocious. I find that a lot of people find the damage scaling a little dissatisfying. Not all the characters are equally as good as the others. A perfect example of this is the Sub-Zero problem, where Sub-Zero players do the most amount of hits for the least amount of damage out of any character on the roster. But then you've got the newer additions coming in and stealing the show with their fancy combos and high damage combos. Remember when Peacemaker first came out? Those 50 to 60% combos were wild. Safe to say that everyone agrees character balancing needs some improvement. I mentioned that I looked at other fighting games like Street Fighter and Tekken to see how they do things. When it comes to Tekken, they do have a Tekken Ball and Arcade Quest mode that people seem to love. As for Street Fighter, they have a bunch of good quality characters that also seem to be well balanced. The characters are fun to play and I haven't seen any one or two characters that overpower the roster. And going back to Tekken, I also found that the different systems in the game are very well built. For example, the heat system which allows for a 10 second damage buff in each round. All in all, these two games have exactly what fans of the fighting game genre want. They feel like they're worth their price tag. Which cannot be said for Mortal Kombat. When are we gonna get justice for Sub-Zero? Now, is Mortal Kombat a bad game? Not really. Are there some serious issues with the game? Absolutely. Of course, there's always going to be the factor of a player's preference and thoughts, but looking more into why the game has had this downward spiral has 
Well, it hasn't taught me anything. I'm still not a fighting game enthusiast, but I will say you're entitled to your own opinion and don't let others' distaste for Mortal Kombat stop you from enjoying the game. Anyways, leave a comment down below telling me if you still play Mortal Kombat or if you've moved on to another fighting game. Also, leave a like on the video if you enjoyed and consider subscribing if you're new. And if you like this video, then check out my recent video where I talk about why Minecraft is boring. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you guys next time.